If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. All right, so first up today, you guys, we have some awesome information coming out of VATSIM. VATSIM is now getting ready to test over in Europe, Norway, and Germany. Uh, the, or excuse me, Germany, Netherlands, and uh, the UK, I'm sorry, in Europe. <laughs> uh, VATSIM is getting ready to test the 8.33 kilohertz VHF frequency spacing. Now, for those of you who are like, what the heck is that? What that is, is in our comm frequencies, okay? So, for example, uh, if you're doing 121 dot, you know, decimal 205, right? The 205 is what is, is part of the 8.33 megahertz spacing. What it does is those last three digits, the 8.33 megahertz or kilohertz spacing, excuse me, allows you to fine tune those frequencies, um, and, uh, once this is released, I will release a video showing you guys actually how, for example, in the G 1000 NXI, um, how to change that spacing from 25 kilohertz is what it is by default in Microsoft flight simulator. 8.33 is what we're going to need to change it to when this becomes active. If you're going to be a VAT sim flyer. Um, but essentially what it does is allows you to fine tune those last three digits, giving you much or many more options of frequencies. <clears throat> A short example is for um, in the 25 kilohertz range, okay, if you're on the 25 kilohertz settings, when you turn the last three digits, you might get five or six different frequency options and that's it. It'll recycle back to the beginning of the list. Where if you're on 8.33 kilohertz frequency spacing, you'll get a ton of options um, through each primary digit. So 0.100 to 0.200, you'll have multiple frequencies in between there going all the way up, I believe it's to 0.9. Um, so anyway, this is really huge news because what it's going to do is it's going to reduce the congestion on the network. It's going to create more frequency options, also increase the immersion of the flight experience while on VATSIM, giving you guys much more, um, well, essentially much more work to do inside the simulator, um, but giving you a much more realistic feeling of what it is you need to do in order to contact the controllers. So this is super, super awesome. Again, this is just getting ready to go into testing over in Europe. Again, those countries are going to be um, in Germany, the Netherlands, and the UK. It's going to be a three-month trial that begins on September the 7th. Uh, so if you're in those regions, uh, you guys are going to be super happy uh, when you jump onto VATSIM. Um, so cross your fingers that everything goes well and that it moves over to the entire environment. Um, and uh, that's definitely going to be something to look forward to. So good luck to Vatsim and I hope everything goes well. I hope you guys are ready for it. Super excited about the progress you guys have made. Next up, some new information on the Got Friends F4F Wildcat. If you guys haven't already spotted it, take a look at the propeller. The propeller is damaged, much like we saw with the A2A Comanche, which means Got Friends is stepping up the game and including some damage models with the aircraft. They've posted a couple videos on the Microsoft forums as well, showing the uh, actual damage happening in action from the simulator point of view, as well as showing the incredibly gorgeous animation of the wings uh, extending from a folded position. I am super excited for this aircraft. I cannot wait for this one to come out. Um, it falls right in line for me with the Corsairs. There's just something about all of those aircraft from the F4U to the F4F. Um, you know, you know, I, just dawned on me. There's a lot of F4s. We have the F4U Corsair. We have the F4F Wildcat, the uh, F4 Phantom. <laughs> There's been a few of those, haven't they? It just dawned on me. Anyways, super excited for this aircraft. The animation they have shown thus far in their videos looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, the sound is something that is really coming along nicely. I can't wait to hear these big that big radial engine inside this aircraft. And again, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun flying it with somebody in a Corsair, doing a Corsair F4F, sort of, uh, um, and even the Hellcat. Um, you know, we could 
<laughs> there's just a lot of ideas that I have with this aircraft. And I love these old World War II birds. You know, it's funny because I'm, I'm sort of a hypocrite in, in a way in the aspect that I, I don't really care for the modern jets in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And it's, it's not that they're bad. There's nothing wrong with them at all. Um, I think what it is for me is there's something. There's something about the, the nostalgia of, of flying one of these old warbirds. A, you see it all the time, right? Uh, you got plenty of private owners who own many of these aircraft, everything from Zeros to ME-109s to P-51 Mustangs, of course, the popular bird itself, the Corsairs. You know, you, you have plenty of private owners of these aircraft. So I guess it feels a bit more realistic to the idea of being in one of these versus being in an F-18 flying over the city. Uh, you know, but it really just depends on, on what your immersion is. But there's just something about every time I get into one of these older aircraft, especially especially in VR. There's something about these older birds in Microsoft Flight Simulator and Virtual Reality that I absolutely love. Anyways, super crossing my fingers for this one that it comes out soon. They're definitely putting a ton of work into it. I love that they're adding damage models to it, which leads me to believe there's probably going to be a bunch of failures that are going to be added along with it too, making it even more cumbersome to fly. Um, but I am up for the challenge. Let me know what you guys think about the F4F. Heading over to FS Elite. By the way, you guys, if you have not checked out their website or by some chance still new to it, FS Elite is an incredibly awesome news site for all things flight simulation, whether your thing is P3D F or uh, FSX. Well, I guess technically still uh, P3D X-Plane 11, X-Plane 12, Microsoft Flight Simulator, DCS World. It doesn't matter. They are an absolutely wonderful source for news on flight simulation. But coming over to their website, you have Blackbird Simulations has announced the T6A. Uh, the T6 is a military trainer. It is a variant of the Beechcraft T6 Texan. I actually saw one of those over at the uh, Flight Sim Expo in uh, Houston, Texas. Uh, that was a, it's a pretty cool air, little aircraft. Um, I do wish that there was a way to make these things multi-cockpit. So I'm kind of wondering if, if there's any way that that's going to be coming out around the corner here. But so far... All we get is a very brief teaser with this flyby view of the aircraft, some really great audio. Feel free, guys. I will have a link to the YouTube video down in the description below. Uh, so if you guys are interested in checking that brief image out, it definitely is really, really awesome. The T6 Texan will be another one that is a really interesting um, rendition of it and uh, will definitely bring a new experience to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Blackbird Simulations has definitely hasn't done anything wrong, in my opinion, yet. I've loved all of their aircraft thus far. So uh, super excited for their newest release to be coming around the corner. Another nice update coming out of Phoenix for their Egg 320. Now, just to be clear, um, this is not a part of the Block 2 version 2 update. This is a version 2 Block 1 still. But the biggest thing that I want you guys to be aware of is to make sure that you guys patch it up because they have uh, fixed for many users, quote unquote, the high CPU usage that's going to dramatically in increase your performance, going to stop a lot of stuttering. Anything that frees up your CPU is going to make the simulator run significantly smoother on the back end there. Um, so I wanted you guys to have a quick hit on that. There is a bit more information coming out about the version 2 block 2, which that's where our... Um, uh, visual updates, EFB, things like that are going to be coming into play with the flyby wire update that's going to include VNAV and uh, LNAV enhancements. Um, but uh, we don't have that update as of yet. So this is still version two block one, but it is a CPU performance increase. And uh, the second I read that, I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that. I know there are a lot of you guys who love the Phoenix A320, but it, it if you're like me, you've seen some some issues with it in the in the last few weeks, and it sounds like a lot of that may have been resolved with simply uh, making the CPU perform much better. So if you own the Phoenix A320, make sure that you guys grab that update. Sim Solutions has released their version of the DA20 Charlie One Eclipse. This little aircraft is so tiny and yet so nimble. I think this would be an absolutely fun one to have, and we're going to grab it when we when I guys tell you that as the price. You're definitely probably going to be all over this one too. Um, it reminds me of a little katana. I know they're very similar in aircraft, um, but they've done an absolutely wonderful job with this particular aircraft. It looks absolutely stunning, and it definitely reminds me of a katana. My dad and I flew a little katana way, way, way back in the day um, when I was still a young boy, and it actually had a stick in it. Um, so it was a ton of fun to fly. Of course, back then at that age, I was anything was was uh, was fun to fly there. Um, and uh, this aircraft is is 
really well modeled. It's very, very simple. It's obviously a very small GA aircraft for cruising around the town. But there's the stick that I was telling you guys about. Very, very slimmer to the Katana. What was really neat about the Katana is you couldn't make the damn thing stall. I swear to God, you couldn't. Uh, we would just, we'd pull and pull and pull and pull and you feel the buffet and then that was it. It would just sit there. It actually just wouldn't actually stall. So this aircraft definitely reminds me of it. And one of the most beautiful parts about this particular aircraft it is a whopping 1549. Uh, I believe it is pounds on the any builds uh, store. So if you guys want to pick that aircraft up, make sure you head on over to the any build store and grab it. Uh, it is certainly an aircraft that I'm going to be picking up on. We'll definitely be going up in the air and doing a review on it, or for at least the very least a first impressions. I don't know if I'll call it a review until, uh, until I get the hang of it, but uh, really, really cool little aircraft. And these little tiny ones are a lot of fun to fly. I love the top open canopy. Um, again, everything about it gives you that fighter feeling from the second you sit inside the cockpit. So ton of fun there. Let me know what you guys think and if you'll be picking this up. If you already have it, let us know down below what you think of it. Some new updates on the aeroplane Heavens Lancaster. This World War II bomber is definitely starting to come along and hopefully nearing release. As you guys start going through the pictures here with me, check out all of the detail that has been put into not only the aircraft, but the surrounding environment. You can see there uh, the uh, World War II equipment all sitting there on the ground next to it. Bombs and everything being loaded into the bomb bay here. It's kind of cool that we get that, uh, that image there of the bomb bay doors open obviously indicating that we have that capability. Um, this is absolutely a stunning looking uh, aircraft thus, thus far here. Now, as you guys may know, the uh, Lancaster saw action primarily in the, well, not primarily, but saw action in the European theater as this was a British World War II bomber. Um, the Lancaster could still be flown with things like, you know what would be really cool is a bunch of Lancasters with a bunch of Spitfires going up. I think that would be an absolute ton of fun as a group flight absolutely stunning job look at this stuff man they are really going all out all of the wear and tear coming out from the engine exhaust even right down you can see where the heat trail is coming down past the engine over the wings really amazing fuel trucks really putting a lot of effort into this. wow look at that well, that must be the engineering station if i'm not mistaken wow Definitely we're taking a lot of emphasis on showing that nostalgia in that age of the aircraft. I think the biggest thing that's going to be the kicker for me at this point, I mean, obviously the graphics look fantastic. I cannot wait to hear it. I want to hear these four engines rolling. That's what I can't wait to hear. I think that's really going to, what's going to make it or break it for me is, is, you know, I mean, obviously it's going to be feature rich. They have all the stations very accurately modeled. Somebody has access to the real Lancaster and that's freaking cool. Um, I don't even care if they're just pictures like that's just awesome to be able to get in there. But uh, with all the crew animation and things like that, that it's very clearly happening here. I really hope that they nail it with the sound because that would be the only kicker here. You know, I, I, sound can make it or break it. And with those four big engines going, man, oh, my gosh, this thing's going to roar. Let me know what you guys think about the aeroplane Heavens Lancaster and how you guys are feeling about it. Hopefully soon joining the Microsoft Flight Simulator fleet because um, uh, this is definitely going to be a cool one. Like I said a minute ago, I really enjoy the old war uh, Warbird aircraft, including the bombers. Um, is there's just something about uh, being a part of that history and being able just to, to get up and fly them around. Uh, I don't know if I've ever said this on the channel. Years and years ago, my father actually won a ride in a B-17, and I was so small and so young that I was too scared to go up in it, and I kick myself for it every day now. Uh, every time it pops up in my head, I think about, gosh, I wish I had gone in that. So um, it's one of the beautiful parts about these flight simulators. They give you at least a little piece of that. And uh, I hope that with the Lancaster, I hope they nail it. I really do. Last up on the list here, guys, a little while ago, I posted a video about uh, this gentleman here, Philip Porter, a good friend of the family who unfortunately lost his life uh, last week. Um, and in less than a couple of hours, you guys have already done almost a thousand dollars in, in participating here. And I just wanted to give a big shout out and a big thank you. And, and uh, that gratitude comes from myself and the family. Um, you guys are amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, if you guys are interested in donating, there will be a link to it down in the description. But um, my my big thing was just I wanted to say thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. This is the most heartwarming, most amazing thing that I could have ever asked for. 
from this channel is to be able to do something like this. Uh, it's not something I do often. It's not something I do lightly. And so uh, the, the choice to do this and announce this on the channel was something I had to think about. Um, and uh, you guys, you guys are, are truly showing the value and love that, that goes into this community. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you guys so, so much. Um, if you guys are interested in further detail, there um, I'll have a, uh, a link to the previous video down in the description as well. But um, thank you guys so much. As always, guys, stay safe and healthy. And I will see you definitely in the next one. Have a good night, guys.